Hello everyone. Uh, last time, if you remember, we talked about CSS mode. We talked about inline CSS, external CSS, those things. But now, today, our focus will be more on JavaScript. Okay, what it is, how it will work, and everything. Um, now let's understand first why javascript learning javascript is important as i said before also that you are if you are going to automate ui user interface you know browser web application so as a test engineer you should be good on on ui part like how the elements are created how it is calling some function in the background so those things are done by actually javascript right so there are two kind of javascripting one is client side scripting and another is server side script so server side scripting is a bit sophisticated thing which is generally developer does it Right. Client side scripting also is done by the developer or the programmer. But as a test engineer, we should know about at least client side scripting. We should know one thing. I'll talk about what is client side scripting. Don't worry. And moreover, most of the new age automation tools, they have a very good, you know, what we can say support or most of the test automation tool, right? <clears throat> they work with JavaScript. Right? There may be some tool which exclusively working with, let's say a particular language, VBScript or Java programming or C Sharp, right? But I'm telling that most of the good tools, good automation tools, they work with JavaScript as well. Okay, so that's the beauty of JavaScript. Um, second thing is, for your API testing framework also, or UI testing framework also, um, JavaScript is important. Sometimes even when you are working with Selenium with Java also, but in between you have to inject JavaScript. So for that part also, we should know JavaScript. So Java programming and JavaScript, both are different things. Both are different programming language, okay? So we are talking about JavaScript basics. You, you don't have to learn it in detail, but at least, you know, basic knowledge about syntax, how function works, uh, how string method works, those things you should know. So now your new goal is, last time I talked about CSS part, right? Invest at least four to five days on learning CSS and do some practical. Now, JavaScript, invest around 10 days or the 10 hours to learn it. Minimum, I'm saying minimum. So our goal should be next 10 to 12 days, let's say, uh, learn JavaScript. So I'm not going to take all the sessions about JavaScript and all. I'm here to guide you about how it works. Some of the examples I can talk, right? So here, JavaScript tutorial link is this. You should, you guys should learn it chapter by chapter. Learn theoretically also understand it, what it is, what is JavaScript and all. Uh, we will talk <clears throat> with respect to our uh, assignment. We will do something here, okay? I am going back to the W3 school's very first chapter, which says JavaScript is the world's most popular programming language. JavaScript is the programming language of the web. JavaScript is easy to learn. This tutorial will teach you JavaScript. Fine, fine. So click me to display date and time. So this is a simple JavaScript program, which you can inject in your HTML code, it's very much possible. This is a kind of sophisticated code, which I'm not going to take as of now. 
let's do it with our example so that things will be clear what we want to do okay fine but but what what i was saying is yes you should learn it uh from here w3 schools and uh, chapter by chapter if you'll go there are a lot of interesting thing will come and you will understand that okay html and javascript work hand in hand you can put your javascript code also inside the html file which we are going to see now so this is our assignment let's say as i said that it is asking us name age country phone number describe yourself so let's take a very simple example that if i give a name here let's say nitesh okay these are not all, all anything is mandatory field here and if i click here it should say me welcome nitesh or welcome user whatever is the name how to do that so let's understand that here you have to write client side scripting as of now, as of now here okay i was talking about client side in javascript server side scripting right so for any website, let's say this is a website. Uh, let's open any other website. Let's say this erail.in. If I do right click and say view page source, you will be able to see some you know, code here. And if you see here, it's saying script here, right? And there are some functions. This is JavaScript. This is not HTML code. This is basically a javascript code which we can see which a user who is opening the particular website in the browser they are able to see this script this is called client side scripting okay which will work on your browser then and there so this is exposed to us there is no harm uh, for the e rail whatever this website is their developers that they don't worry about some of the scripts which they are showing us that's fine there are see here there are uh, see here this is also a script right don't worry about it. it's not it's not very much difficult uh, once i'll show you some example you will get to know it's not that much difficult how we think okay it's not difficult uh so these are scripts now what is server side script then server side script is which you are not able to see here maybe once you will click on this get train the request will go right so when you inspect it so for example let's say we will say inspect and we'll see the network okay let's see that so when you right click and say inspect you may you will have this network tab right or you can do f12 most of the uh, means all browser has this thing okay and let me click on get train again so now you will observe that there are a lot of network calls are happening okay? these calls and somewhere you will see that there are script call is also happening right you may observe that there is javascript call also so if i click on js you will be able to see that there are a lot of javascript call is also happening don't worry about that what it is doing like uh, you know it is calling this particular js calling some function but i just want to show you that this may be a server side scripting which is not visible to you it's doing something coming back right it's like this very server side scripting but in the view source if you see there are a lot of functions which is visible to you there are a lot of script which is visible to you this is client side scripting and generally for for um verification purpose some of the validation is done on the um client side itself okay so for example let me open let me open the website so that things will be more clear what i'm saying uh, let me open it in firefox it's not opening in my test dot left dot in okay issue 
that is fine. Okay, no problem. Any other website, any other, let's say, um, facebook.com, if we will open, uh, if I'll say create new account, let's say, and I will not provide the first name, right? And I'll click on sign up. So it is showing me a lot of things, right? What is your name? This is getting red and all, right? So this is happening because of maybe client side scripting as well, right? Why, you know, this will disturb the server. It will not. So do you think that all this call, once if you are not feeling any value, let's assume, and you click on the sign up, do you think, there is a server call is happening and the server side, it is checking that whether you have filled the form, mobile number or not. No, no, no. It is checked at the client side itself, right? So that validation, at least small validation is done on the client side scripting itself, right? So for example, let's say I'll put some name, test, test, mobile number I will not put, let's say, some password I am putting, okay? And then age, I'm putting something, let's say mail. And I've, I'm not putting the mobile number, let's assume. And if I click on the sign up, see here, it is showing me that you will use this when you log in. That's why phone number is important, something like that. So this message is not coming from the server. This message is not coming from the server. This message is handled at the UI level itself at client level itself, okay? So that is what uh, client side scripting is. And the same thing we want to do. So what I'm saying is when Nitesh or any name is here, if I click here, it should show me welcome, welcome user, something like that. So for that, you can write the script and the script can you can write on clicking on the submit. So what we will do, let's go back to the code assignment.html and if you remember we have button this one at line number 24 here we have button what i'm going to do is i'll say on click so i'll say on click what you have to do on click so i'll say on click call a function and the function name is uh welcome i'm just giving a random name welcome that's it so i'm saying that whenever this button is called on click call this function and when we are calling a function it is like function name and the bracket that's it but then you have to define this function as well where you have to define you have to define in script now, the question is where we will write the script. So for that, I'm taking the example uh, where we had that first example, script. So script, you can write um, anywhere, but uh, let me see some other example uh, so that it will be clear where to write that script. So a script you can write inside the body. That's perfectly fine. And a script will start with the tag name script and end with the script itself. So let's go back to our code and anywhere in the body, let's say at the end, before we end here, I will say script here. End tag, start tag is a script and end tag also is script spelling is this done and in the script now i can write my javascript code so that function was welcome so i'll say function welcome okay that's it and this is bracket so in any programming language, right, or most of the programming language, when you want to define a function, you, you have to name the function, right? It's like this. 
So in JavaScript, it's like function and the function name and the bracket. Now you are defining what will happen when somebody will uh, call that function, correct? So here I'm simply putting alert and here I'll say hi. Hi, I am learning JS. Save this. So what now is going to happen is we said that there is a button, uh, this one, this one, line number 24. And whenever this button will be clicked, which is submit button, on click, go to welcome, means go to call this function. So what it, it will search, where is the welcome function? So it will come here in the script and it will now execute whatever you have written within this curly bracket. And what I have written, alert this. So alert is a function in JavaScript, which creates the pop-up alert. Okay, let's see whether this is working. I'm going back to this. I'll refresh this and I will directly clicking on the submit without doing anything. Just click on the submit. So when I'm clicking it, see here, this pop-up is coming, which is saying, hi, I'm learning JS. The same text which we put there, right? So this is what alert okay fine what happens when alert is there you cannot do anything in the background you cannot do anything in the background you have to close this there are a lot of different kind of alert this is just one type of very basic alert which is okay is there you have to click it it's like this anyways so i'm able to print something great i'm able to say something here that means I can do something here, right? Or our next task is if I put here John, I should be able to say hi John, something like this. Let's try that. Now the question is, this value can be anything. It's not hard coded John. Whatever user will provide. Let's say if user will say Virat, so it should say hi Virat. If I will say here let's say any name any name so if i'll say here kevin and if i'll hit submit it should say hi kevin now the question is how to get this value so there is one way you have to identify this element first that is important you have to identify this text box you have to identify this text box uniquely so if i'll say here nitesh I can right click and I'll say inspect. Now I can inspect that element. Okay, I can inspect the element. How to inspect the element? There is one inspect icon. See here, this one. So you click here and I will go here. So in the elements tab, I'm able to see that the code behind this particular text box is input type is equals to text input type is equals to text but you have to identify the element uniquely you have to identify the element uniquely in most of the cases there must be some unique identification for that element okay so let's see and give some unique identification here input type is equals to text i'll give an id ID is equals to U name. I'm giving this U name. Okay. And for the age, let's give some ID. ID is equals to U age, which is like user age, something like that. And I'm not giving anything to other things. That's fine. Now, why this ID generally or this class, you know, those things are put by the developers, right? See, there is no change in the UI. Even if I put ID or anything, user interface is still safe. But they generally put these things, class, ID, other attributes, visible, readable, lot of things. They put it because they themselves want to get this value from the user at some point, correct? So now if I'll say Nitesh here and I'll inspect this, I'm able to see input type is equals to text, ID is equals to name, correct? I can go to console 
I will show you here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going here at console and I'll write document dot get element by ID. It is It will give you the option and the ID name is uname. And if I hit enter, just a minute, document dot get element by ID uname. Hold on. This one. Hit enter. See here, it is able to get that particular, you know, text box because that text box has ID is equals to name. Now, let me clear this. So, oh, clear, you can do it from here also. Now, I want to get the value of it. So, I'll say dot value. I think this should work. See here, it is showing me Nitesh. That means the coder, the JavaScript code, whoever will write or the full stack developers, this is just one of the example. They can get the value of this particular thing uh, using this code document dot get element by ID. Document means HTML document. Get element by ID means getting this text box through its unique identification with his ID and dot value means we want to get the value. So whatever you will put it, let's say if I'll put here John, John, Johnny Walker. And if I'll again say here document dot get element by ID, see here, I'm getting Johnny Walker here. Okay. Let's do it with the age. So age I am putting 34, let's say. So here, if I'll say doc get element by you age, and if I hit it, it's showing me 34. That means I'm able to get the value. So this is the console where you can write JavaScript code also. Okay, let me clear it. Let me close this. So in my code, in the script, the same thing I can write, I will say here and you can store it in a variable. So in JavaScript, you can use var or let x. You can say let x also. Let username is equals to document dot get element by ID. Let me copy it. Let me copy so that there will be no you know spelling mistake. So basically I want to write this. So let me copy this. Yeah. And here I will write let username is equals to document dot get element by ID value. And I want to print it, right? So I'll say alert, alert, hi, hi, and plus sign. I'll tell you why there is a plus sign and username. Why we are doing it? So alert, we want to show with a message like hi, but we want to append some value. The value will come from here. So we're saying let username is equals to this. So we have already seen document dot get element by ID. If you will get, get you will get that, that text box. And when you say dot value, you will get the value which user has filled at that time for that session. And then we are saying alert, hi, that username. Let's save this and let's go back here. Let's refresh this. Let me close this also and let's put a name. So this time, if I'll say a name as Anjum, okay. And if I click on submit, see here, it's saying hi Anjum. That means we are able to get the value, correct? And it's a successful thing. So if I'm able to get here, I will be able to set something here also. So there should be a label where I will say welcome. So let's see that. What we can do here is what I'm saying. After that button, let's create a label. Let's create a label. Okay. This button is done. What I'm saying Okay, this is under div. Uh, 
just after that, let's create a label or paragraph, anything you can. So I'm saying label ID is equals to um, message. Um, I don't know how it will look like. So I'll say welcome dot 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 and label closed. So let's see how it is looking as of now. See here, this welcome is visible. Let me say align. Align is equals to center. And then refresh this. No, no, no. It, it, it's not like that, that if you will do it center, it will come on. Anyways, welcome we are able to see. Right? Welcome we are able to see. Let me make it paragraph. P. P means paragraph. Save this. I'm just checking how it will look like. Yes, welcome is coming in the middle. Now it's fine. Okay. So that's good. But I want to show, if I'll say Nitesh here, it should show welcome Nitesh somewhere here, right? So for that also, you have to write the code. So uh, what we will do, we want to set the value of the paragraph, correct? So what we will do, same, go to the function level and say, hmm, now I want to set the value, right? I don't want to get the value. So can I say, uh, P dot, no, no, no. You have to identify the element. That is for sure. First, you have to identify the element. So now I want to identify an element which is MSG, right? And I will say dot inner HTML. There is a way which you can say inner HTML. Just a minute. It's not showing me. But I can, can I say dot value dot value is equals to I no. I don't think it will work. So what I'm saying is if I'll refresh this, I'll put a name here. I'll say submit. It's not it's not changing welcome part, right? So there is a way to set the paragraph. So let's let's Google it. There is no harm in Googling it. So Google, Google, google.com. I'll say how to set paragraph value in HTML. So uh, 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 uh. I think it is inner HTML. Okay. Yeah. So it's saying, no, no, this one, DOM changing HTML. So changing HTML content is inner HTML. I was thinking about this. So this is dot inner HTML that you have to set. I'm copying this. And in my code, I will say that instead of that, I'll say dot inner HTML is equals to welcome dot 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 same thing plus username this one which wish the same thing we did something on the alert side right i'm saying this now and is it semicolon required at the end yes means end of the statement done now if i will refresh this and i will say here nitesh i'll click on the submit if I click on the OK, see here, I'm able to show here, welcome Nitesh. And how simple it is. It is not difficult coding. It is just identifying that element, which was this message paragraph element and say dot inner HTML. Why inner HTML? Because this paragraph has some text, right? Which is inner HTML thing. This, this text we are saying inner HTML. And setting that value instead of welcome dot dot, I want to set it as welcome dot 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 username, right? Or you can write it here, anything. Let me delete this alert part. So I'm commenting it. I'll say, hi, user. It's like this. Save this. Save this. And this time, if I'll do submit, it should say, okay, I have to refresh this. 
and we, I'll give any name, testology. And if I'll give it, click on submit, it's saying hi user testology. So we are able to capture this name through the script. 